So I put this together with two shapes, one a circle and one the trophy. And then I rotated the trophy a little bit and added some styles. Look at that, I'm a graphic design genius. So with a little bit of effort, you can create something like that. Now, Photoshop also has um, some uh, another way to kind of create interesting graphical uh, elements uh, based on text, for example. Now, I created this with two layers. But as you create yours, you may have a bunch of layers. So one useful thing to do is to organize our project. We, ha we can create folders inside of a Photoshop document. For example, I've got a shape 1 and a shape 2. I've got two layers. And then all of these special effects apply to a layer. The original trophy is red, and that circle is red. But with these styles, they, they change. So there's a triangle next to the layer to show and hide the underlying effects that make up the the style. I've got a smaller kind of screen to work with, so I'm going to collapse these. If you click on those, they, they hide. They're still applied, of course. But regarding uh, layer management, let's say I want to make a design and I get a different idea. I want another design and another design. Well, instead of creating different files, I can make different designs in one file and organize them in folders. If you see here in the Layers panel, you'll see a folder. If you click on that, you may get something that says Group 1, either above or below or somewhere. It doesn't matter where. But you get something called Group 1, as a triangle shows that it's open. And now if you drag your shape into the group, on top of the group, it should become indented. You drag the other one, it should become indented. Now be careful, because if you drag these around, obviously the order of these is wrong now. One shape is on top of the other. So just drag them so that they're the correct order. But both of these are indented because they're part of that group. You can drag it outside of the group. It's no longer part of the group. They're part of the group. So the point of that is that now I've organized those two shapes into one group, and I can make more shapes, more icons, more graphics, more drawings in different groups. So you just create a new layer, a new, that is a new folder, a new group, and group them in there. Next to, next to the layer there's an eye for visibility. You say, well maybe uh, my icon might look nice without the circle. So you can click the eye. It doesn't delete that object or that asset. That layer still exists. It's just invisible. And when I save it eventually into my project, the circle won't follow just what's visible. And part of the reason to put this into groups is that you can click the eye, the visibility of the whole group, and everything inside of it hides. So you can kind of then get like a new blank canvas. So I recommend you do this. Put your layers in a group and then hide that group so that we can do a new group to do a few more graphics effects. So my old idea is in group one. You can rename these by double clicking and naming them something else. But my group one, I've also hidden it. I've created a group 2, and it's visible, and my group 2 is selected. <coughs> yes? How can delete forever? Depending what you want to delete, you can select it, and then you can click the trash can, and it will delete either a layer or a whole group. Okay, so another way that we can use Photoshop is text-based. We can use various fonts, various interesting fonts, and then also apply styles or shapes. What if I draw a rounded rectangle, and on top of it I put the letters of the initials of my app? So, for example, I can go to the rounded rectangle tool first in my group 2 and I'll maybe put 
some color, and then draw a rounded rectangle shape. So on top of that, I'm going to put maybe the letter, the letters of my app. So that means I've got my text tool. In Photoshop, it's a T. In other software, it might be an A. Horizontal type tool. I click here and I have all of the fonts installed on this computer. On the top options bar, it has now changed to show text options. Once you switch to the text tool, I get all of the fonts. Some of them look more interesting than others. But if I've got an interesting looking font, I can use it as the starting point like Matura MT Script. I click on that. I've also got sizes, and I think probably we want to make sizes of at least 72. CBD. CBD. Actually, I forgot. If we first draw our shape, then we draw our text, the shape will want to be, the text will want to be in the shape instead of outside of it. So, I'm actually going to press escape to cancel my text. Uh, I think it might be better to write the text first and then make the shape. Sometimes you want an effect where a, your text is in a shape in a certain way, but in this case actually it's going to get in the way. So I'm going to I'm going to delete my my layer. Never mind. I'm going to draw that shape a little later. So let me delete that and focus on the text first. I'm going to try that again. So I deleted the, the shape layer. I selected it and press delete. I've chosen the text tool, a font. This only goes up to 72, but I'm going to need text that's even bigger than that. So I can type a number right here. Let's say 150. Press enter. And now you've got, <coughs> got a larger size. You can also select what you've already typed and change the size. 200. So this has a whole bunch of complex, and this is a whole chapter in most books, text. I've chosen a font, I've chosen a size, but now my text is falling off of the edge. Well, I'm still in the text tool. When my text tool is on top of text, it behaves like a selector or a cursor, like you would do in Word. But when your text tool is outside of your text, it temporarily becomes a move tool. So you can move your text into place. You can select one of the words to increase the size. type of value, you press enter. You can select all of them. That's too big. I've only got enough space of 500 by 500. You can do free transform to this too, I suppose, but it's uh, often more common to just set the right points here. Shows Matura font, black color, 275 pixels in my case, or 275 points in my case. I wrote this lowercase, so that 275 will look different with uppercase and lowercase. And once I've once I've done, once I've completed writing my text, I have to click the check mark up there to approve the changes confirm or cancel changes. What I can do with this text is I can also apply styles. So any of these, any of this text that I wrote, I can also do this stuff. And what I've also got with text at the top You've got the ability to warp the text. So you can warp the text to make it look like a fish. So you've got your text, you've got your layer selected, you click on that warp, and you've got a bunch of then warps that you can play with. 
Click on that, do a style of like, arc, it looks like that. You can play with the different strengths, seashell shape, and then here it is, fish shape. Doesn't really look like a fish, but it depends on the font and other things. You have these various distortions you can do. You have the text, you have styles, you have warp. There's one that and I've been using Photoshop probably by now for 20 years. Photoshop's been around like 25 or 27 years. So I've been using Photoshop a lot. And there's also new stuff that comes out. So I, I don't know everything, especially the newest things. And one thing that I've been wanting to play with a little bit more is this 3D effect here. I haven't really done very much with it. But it looks like now there's the abilities to make your text 3D. So I don't have much to say about this since I haven't done it much, but you can click on that and it'll open up some sort of 3D mini program or something. I'm just going to cancel that. I don't want to get into that just yet. Warp text. In my day, we just had warp text. Now you can do 3D text. You can apply styles, all of that good stuff. And I just crashed Photoshop. We're trying to do 3D work text. Remember to save your work. Hopefully I saved it. Hopefully I saved it before I made these changes. But usually I do. Get in the habit of Control-S. As soon as you make a lot of changes, Control-S. Or on the Mac, Command-S. Really? Hmm. You probably need a good graphics card and a good modern computer and all of that stuff. So they've kind of built in something that's beyond our grasp to have, to have us uh, upgrade. Now be careful here. It crashed, and I'm opening my file again. Double-clicked it, but it's opening in Adobe uh, Photoshop Elements. I don't want Elements. This is the training wheels. <coughs> so if you just double-click your PSD file, it's going to open in Elements. You want it in Big Brother Photoshop. Good, it did recover what I did, kind of. So text is another way that you can make these, you can make these um, icons, get pretty creative with text. Yes? But you can increase the uh, PT points because here is maximum 72. What you have to do then is type it. You only get that amount to select, but if you click there, you'll be able to type whatever you want. Then you press enter. So what I'm going to do is add a little text, and then I'll add a shape. For example, a rounded rectangle. So it's just a matter of kind of experimenting with different effects. 
just that's just text, an interesting font, and that's a shape. And I've added styles here. I like the text styles swatch uh, collection of styles. And then it's a matter of kind of moving these around and um, sizing them and such. And here's another icon that I could have for my project. Play with that a moment, and then I'll show you another way to create graphics. This time from a from a very professional uh, resource. So maybe a couple minutes, play with some text and shapes and styles, and see what you come up with. So a quick reminder for everyone: today you need to sign in on three of these sign-in sheets. Uh, two that say hybrid at the top and one from today. So make sure everyone signs in on the three. Okay, so let's say, uh, let's look at a third way where we can create some interesting um, icons for our app. I've got a group one, which is the original shapes, and I've got a group two of text. For myself, I'm going to rename group one. You can double click the title and call it shapes. Group two, text. So one icon made of shapes and one icon made of text. I'm going to hide them both and make a new layer. Call this one emoji. So you've probably heard of emoji. It's the new language taking over the world. These uh, cute little faces and uh, animals and fruit and everything. You know, you, you don't reply to someone anymore, I love you, you reply with a little face with hearts in the eyes. Uh, you don't uh, send someone a message saying, are you hungry today? You send them a little emoji of a taco. Right? So there's all these emoji to communicate, these little ideograms. So the most famous emoji is uh, the one from Apple. The emoji has been created several years ago, at least 10 years ago, probably 15 or more. The emoji's been around a while. But the iPhone really popularized it a few years ago. But every device has its own set of emoji. Because the official emoji standard, there's an official emoji consortium that decides globally to create these little icons. They basically create a specification and say, happy face with hearts in the eyes. Then it's up to the companies to design a happy face with hearts in the eyes. And Apple was one of the first ones to mass market it. Nokia had emoji before the iPhone, but you know they didn't really catch on in the mobile space with smartphones. So every company then, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Twitter, can make their own emoji based on the official standard. But the Apple ones are the most famous one. They are also copyrighted and trademarked by Apple. So whenever you go to the mall and you see all of these like, look at that cute little emoji pillow, 
and I always wanted to buy a little poo emoji pillow and all of that. Well, that is most likely coming from the official Apple version of that emoji. And uh, someone's violating copyrights somewhere. So there is an open source version of emoji that is free for us to use for our apps and our projects. And they don't look exactly the same as the official Apple ones, but they are very high quality, very nice versions. We can get them for free at, if you go to your web browser, emojione.com, E-M-O-G-I-O-N-E, emojione.com. This is the open source <coughs> emoji collection. Looks very similar to the official Apple ones, but open source. There's a bunch of new ones that are coming out. Emoji 10.0 or whatever is coming out soon, and we're finally going to have things like a zombie emoji, a vampire emoji, a giraffe, profanity emoji. So, oh, and wizards. We're going to have wizards and mages and fairies, finally. But, um, mermen, merwomen, too. Caterpillars, punk rockers, everyone. So uh, we have all of these icons that we can use. Emoji 1, version 3, and version 2. Open source legacy, and then newest. So the open source one, that's the one, version 2, is the one that is the most free for you to use. I'll show you how to download it and put it in Photoshop in a moment. But there's the Emoji 3, which is the newer one, which they do want to sell you that. They want to sell you uh, a special Emoji keyboard or an app to unlock the latest versions. And also for commercial purposes. How do we get into the free one? On the free one? Mm -hmm. We'll do that one more question. Yes, we will see here that it will give us sizes, I think only up to 128 or so. So if we want the larger sizes, that's when we want to buy a license for the larger ones. Um, so that's the short answer. That, yeah, if you want the highest quality ones, we want to buy a license. I don't think it's that expensive, but yeah, we'd have to buy the license. We can use the one that's not as high quality, and it'll be okay. But, you know, once we're making... Once we're making money off of our app, 99 cents at a time, there won't be so much to, to spend on these, maybe. To get the legacy ones, what we can do is, if you click on the emoji gallery here, you scroll down, the legacy set, click anywhere on that icon. Scroll down, so you get a bunch of these. The clown face here is way better than the Apple one, I think. The Apple one looks weird. And we've got these cats and all of that. Okay, so let's say, great, I see all these icons. I want them. Well, this is a preview of what they look like. And again, you can take most of these and use them as is. And I'll show you how to put it in Photoshop. But you can take this and use it in your app. You can change it in Photoshop or Illustrator. Uh, to change the color, the rotation, you can combine. You can put the, the, the knife plus the hammer together for your you know, all-in-one app. Um, these are available for you to use. Then a lot of cool flag emojis. So if you want to have an, a screen in your app to choose the language of your app and you want to switch between, um, between the apps, you can... Uh, get the icon for basically every flag of every country. The way we use them. There is a link. There is a link. 
where you can get the items. They revamped the website. Our so, apps for consumers. Our apps for consumers. Is it there? They changed things up a little bit. Where do we get it again? Kenneth, did you find the right place? Where, did you see where that was at? Did you see? Did you see the spot to download it? Yeah. Uh, GitHub. Okay, it's on GitHub. Okay. Is it there? Uh, hmm. I thought there was a space also on the website. I remember on the website there was a button to click to download the file. They might have moved it around. Get license. Download. Oh, okay. You can do it that way. So it looks like if you click on the get license button, the free license. Actually, it's a little more expensive than I thought. Ninety-nine dollars. I thought it was a little cheaper than that, but up to a thousand dollars. But um, here for the free license, you get the hundred twenty-eight pixel-sized pings. For the higher prices, you can get the SVG version. That's the the better, even better file format to get because that one is scalable. SVG, Scalable Vector Graphic. You can open it and make it up any size, even like 5,000 pixels. That's why they want to sell that version. So you get a version that's a little smaller than what our graphics are, but um, all you really need to do here with this free one... Well, we can make it an SVG in Illustrator. Well, if, if, you, if it gives you the ping uh, you could run it through the, the Illustrator converter, sure. Um, so there's kind of different ways to go about it. Yeah. So, um, free license, download. I want the 128 pixel sized. Do they require you to attribute them? According to this, for the free one, there is an attribution, which all it means is somewhere in your app, and they'll give you the exact text somewhere there. Anywhere in your app, you just copy and paste a little message that says emoji courtesy of emoji1.com. That's all you have to attribute. So I really like these emoji, and I've used them before, but very recently, it looks like they've really changed things, and I guess there isn't much money in giving stuff away for free. So now uh, they're starting to charge, and I haven't seen it very recently, and I'm a little disappointed. It is changing a lot. That's really expensive there, but you get a lot of features, apparently. Although, however, you can't use them for your own company logos or custom artwork. Back in the good old days, like a year ago, you could download. Uh, I remember you could, they would give you the SVG version, but again, everyone now online wants to make money, so there's the there's this one here. So if they add new ones, they charge you those too. It's not like a lifetime year. I'm not sure. I haven't gone through the through that to see what it is like. For the $99, probably they will give you a lifetime license. It's probably the higher prices for what you want to do with them. But in any event, here I can click download. I want the highest one that they'll give me for free. So this will give me a zip file with all of them, 7.8 megabytes. You can click. And you have to fill in some fields here. Again, it used to be just right-click save. Now they've Really yeah. Let's see if you can do this here. Johnny Student at jstudents.biz. Intended use. Please be specific. Stuff and things. <laughs> Access download. Okay, there we go. So that changed now to a download. Great. Mm -hmm. so it works. I don't know if everyone can say stuff and things before they catch on, so you might want to think of something else. 
it lets you download the files for free, SVG and OT files. SVG and OT, oh, that's cool. What can we do with that? Download. Well, the problem with the font version is we need to look up the exact character code to type, like Alt one four seven nine or something. This doesn't seem to be a, a very easy way to get it out of the font, but it looks like he gives it to you as a font also. So that gave me a that gave me a uh, a zip file with two thousand six hundred sixty six individual icons with no easy name to know what they are. You can't read them. Well, it, it is a hex number, but like, what what is that? You know, is it like man with hard hat? Is that like mermaid in the ocean? Is that salad? You can probably change it to large icons. After you unzip it, you can then probably actually view them. I'm going to save a copy of that zip file before they change the, the website again in case I need the icons. You can put that in the it's just taking a moment to extract because it's uh, so there's a zip file in the I'll put the zip file in the network folder in case people want the, the zip file. You have to unzip it to use them to even see what they are. And that'll take a moment because there's 2,600 of them. But anyway, let's say as soon as this unzips, in Photoshop, what you can do is File, Place, Embedded, and that'll let you take a different graphic and embed it into this graphic. So if some other photo that you have, you, know, you took a photo of the restaurant, and you want that to be the, your icon, your app's icon, you can do that. File, place, embedded. You, you'll embed some other graphic into this graphic. And as soon as I extract my emoji, I will embed, I will place that emoji into my project to work with. Here we go. So once it extracts, I can actually see them. I never knew that uh, Antarctica had a flag. It is the shape of Antarctica for all the Antarcticans to hoist. I guess it's kind of alphabetical because there's Cyprus. on for people. It's got all the skin tones. There's a cricket bat. There's monetary items. So um, you can browse around the, the item and let's say I wanted to use this books, comic book database, books. If you find it, that's nice. If you don't, I'll, I'll grab that one and put it directly into the network folder. So 1F4DA, that's what I want to place inside of Photoshop. File, place, embedded. So it gives it to us as 128 size. We have the size of 112. So I know I said previously you don't want to start with a small graphic and blow it up to be big. You want to start with a big graphic and shrink it. But in this case, I will blow it up and it won't look 
that great. Yes? If you wanted to transfer some photo in Photoshop, mm -hmm. how you can do it? It's the same sort of way. You can do File, Place Embedded, and that'll take the photo from your flash drive or wherever, and then place it into your into your document. So how, 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 when you click it, it's going to be a lot of files? Well, depending on your folder. You see, if I go to File, Place, and let's say I go to my folder of pictures. So wherever I have my picture, then I can place it. So this is what I was saying. I started with a small graphic, which looked nice when it was 128. Now I've blown it up to about 512. And maybe from across the room, you don't see it. But here, I see it. That it started to get jaggedy and blurry and bad. So this icon might only be, you know, this icon will look good for our project, uh, which only requires up to 100, uh, up to 96. Remember our project folder. Our res folder for our icons. we're really only targeting up to 96 pixel size. So we did get an image that's larger than that. We, we would need to crop the image. So this might be a little more complex than we need to get into at the moment. But this is one way also to work with this set of pre-made clip art or pre-made graphics and put them into our project. So. If you would like to use the emoji, you could, but let's say for the moment, let's use one of the icons that we created a moment ago, either this text icon or the shapes icon, one of those two. We'll use one of those. This one with the emoji, maybe we'll use it. whatever we're doing, either still creating the graphic or working with the emoji one, let's change gears for a moment to say, we have a graphic, how do we add it to our project? Let's talk about that. Um, then we'll go on to the splash screen. So we'll have time, of course, to, uh, to do this yourself, and eventually the homework will be to make your own icons. We, we've talked about making your own um, colors and fonts, then we need to do your own icons eventually. So what, the big idea is I want to put the this icon that I made into my app. My app has these four shapes, these four sizes that is. And I started with a very large size. So the way we want to do this is save your work, file save, I saved what I have so far. Then we'll go up to File Menu, Export, Save for Web Legacy. We are going to export our image. It's going to prepare it to be used by our app. PSD format is not a format our app can use. We need PNG, ping. So let's go this way. Export, save for web legacy. We have a quick export, but there's a few options I want to set. Save for web. This gives us a preview. We're about to save a graphic. There's a bunch of options on the right. There's a preset. Let's select your preset, ping 24, PNG 24. This will be the right file format, PNG. It will have transparency also. So once we install this icon, we'll have an in my case, I'll have an edge that will be transparent that I can see through. 
If I didn't have transparency, I'd have that white edge that would look pretty bad on the device. So with a ping 24, it already knows the right format, the right transparency. And from the screen, I can also select the size. This is too big. I only need a 96 pixel size. So I can type 96 and then press tab. It's going to shrink it down to the right size that I want to replace. So as I said, either you're going to choose to name your icons whatever you want, but then you have to change the code, or you're going to keep the code, you're going to leave the code alone, but replace the icon. I'm going to say we're going to replace the icon. We'll leave the, we'll leave the config XML file alone, it's too much trouble to work with. We're going to replace the icon that is here with the one that I made. So once you've set ping 24, transparency, and 96 by 96, you can click Save, and then you have to go to the folder where that old graphic is to replace. In my case, it's in computer, in my flash drive, in my apps folder, in my CBD folder, in my res folder, in the icons folder, in the Android folder, 96. If you click on that, it'll take the file name. And once I click save, it'll replace that old. It'll confirm. Are you sure you want to replace that one? Yeah, I do. It's the old, ugly one. I want my cool new icon. So again, that's kind of deep in there, but to remind you, it's inside your project, inside the res folder, resources, inside the icons, and at the moment we're targeting Android because we've got an Android device to work with. But we can then create the icons for iPhone and such. Click once on 96, icon 96, and it will take the name. It won't be called 512 icon anymore. I don't want it to be called that. I want it to be called the icon of the one I'm replacing. You can click once to grab that name and then click Save. Say so you're about to replace an old icon. Yes, replace it. So now I've replaced one of them. I'm going to do the same thing. We go back to Save for Web, we resize it, and we replace it. File. Export, save for web, legacy. It should already know ping 24 transparent. Next we need a size of 72. So you type image size 72, you press tab, shrink down to 14% of the original, save. What's that? It is 36. So 72, I'll click Save. It should have remembered the last folder I saved to. This time I'm going to replace the icon 72. So I'll click once to select icon 72. Click Save. Confirm to replace. Now I've got two of them replaced. Next is 48 by 48. Same thing. File, export, save for web, or handy keyboard shortcut, Alt, Shift, Control, S, which you can master with one hand if you have practice. Uh, that one's going down to 48. Type 48 width, tab, it switches the height for you, save. Now I'm going to replace the icon 48. Replace that one, and then icon 36.
Now at a certain size, icon 48 is okay, but at a certain size, 36. The icon is so small, some app designers actually design a completely different looking icon at that size. 72 and 96 and higher are big enough so that you can see the details of this particular icon. I think they need to see the DV. This one's getting a little cluttered, and that one I think is a lot. So if I had the time or the effort or the will, I could in Photoshop resize my graphic to 36 by 36 and then play with it and only put the letter C, for example. Only C will fit or be visible or readable at that size. Uh, I, I won't do that. You don't need to think about it. You can resize your images and make them perfect for each size. I'll save that and now I'll replace 36. So now my so now my app has some new icons. <clears throat> Those built-in Cordova icons, I've replaced them with my own icon that I made in Photoshop. This is when I can go back to Visual Studio and now run it. I can run it on the device so that it replaces the old icons. And you will see these new icons once you've once you run it on the device and you go look at your apps screen, you'll see your new icon. When you switch between apps in the little app switcher view, you'll see the icon there too. So it's a relatively small, relatively easy thing to do. Make your own icons and replace the old ones. That's it. But we spent so far about two hours making the icons, and that's us doing it quickly. We can definitely spend hours or days or weeks to make the perfect icon, taking into account that the best apps are designed with icons of every size. Someone took the time to design the really small one differently than the really big one, because I've got a big icon, I can design a big icon. When I've got a small icon, I have to design a small icon. We're doing it pretty quick using shapes, using emoji, just resizing them to the sizes that we need. And even that has taken us a few hours. That's perfectly fine. That's different ways to do it. But the, then to actually use them, just replace the old ones, run it, and you've got new icons. If this works, then, then we'll go on to do the splash screen, which is very similar. We create a graphic in Photoshop, we make our own design, we put it in the right folder, we run it, and we've got new splash screen. the first time this might run it might take the longest because now you've got new new assets you've got graphics you've got graphics that visual studio has to compress and compile into the right format so that it's usable and visible by our device
So eventually, here we go, it finally is loading in my project. The splash screen is the same, we haven't dealt with the splash screen. But if I, uh, if I exit the app, and then I go to view all my apps, I see CBDB, and then I see my icon. David, can you confirm right here that my icon is right there, my cool green and blue icon? Mm -hmm. yes. and there you go. So, way better than that Cordova one. I replace the one with the new one. And if I press the button on my Android uh, device to view all my recent apps, the, the icon on the bottom right where it shows your recent apps, you'll also see it there. My recent app was CBDB and it shows the icon on the top left. So the part that takes the most effort is designing the graphics. Adding it to the app is not that complex. You just replace. You just replace what you need to replace and then run it and that's it. You have a new icon. 